قال حمدلا الأسيدي لقيني أبو بكر رضي الله تعالى عنه وقال كيف أنت يا حمدلا وقال حمدلا نافق حمدلا يعني أنا منافق فقال أبو بكر رضي الله تعالى عنه سبحان الله لماذا تقول هذا في نفسك فقال يا أبو بكر إذا كنا عند رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يذكرنا بالنار ويذكرنا بالجنة كأن رأي عين فإذا خرجنا من عنده آفسنا الأزواج والأولاد والنسين كثيرا فقال أبو بكر رضي الله عنه والله إني لا إني لا لقيت مثل هذا فانطلق إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فأخبره بهذا الخبر وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لو أنتم تدومون على ما أنتم علي عليه من عندكم من عندي لا صافحتكم الملائكة لكن يا حنظر الساعة فساعة يا حنظر الساعة فساعة يا حنظر الساعة فساعة حنظر الأسيدي he said that Abu Bakr رضي الله تعالى عنه he met me one day and he asked me how are you حنظر كيف أنت؟ and I said that I'm a hypocrite. I've become a hypocrite. and Abu Bakr رضي الله تعالى عنه said to him why are you saying this about yourself? and he said because and look pay attention to his explanation of why he considered himself a hypocrite. it wasn't something major. it wasn't like a major sin. but to them these were things that were considered very major. he said. When we are with the Prophet وسلم, he reminds us of paradise, he reminds us of the hellfire. As if we can see it with our, with our own eyes. That's how much of an impact the admonition of the Prophet وسلم, had on the Sahaba. It wasn't like today where we get up for Jumu'ah Khutbah and it's as if we're giving a lecture. Right? Jumu'ah Khutbah is admonition. Supposed to be empowering, supposed to be inspiring. When you leave out of Jumu'ah, you're not supposed to leave out of Jumu'ah feeling like you've been educated, but you leave out of Jumu'ah feeling inspired, feeling empowered, feeling that you, your Iman has increased enough to lash you into the next Jumu'ah. He said that when we're with the Prophet وسلم, he reminds us of paradise, he reminds us of the hellfire as if we can see it with our own eyes. And then when we leave out of his presence, we go home to our families, we enjoy our wives and our children, and we forget much of what he reminded us of. The Sahaba, they had the same dilemma that we have today, and that is trying to stabilitate something that cannot be stabilitated, and that is your Iman. Trying to maintain the same level of Iman all the time. It is impossible. He wants to make, he wants, he believes that he is a hypocrite because he cannot have the same level of Iman all the time when he's with the Prophet Sallallahu and then when he's home with his wife and his children. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, Wallahi, I feel the same way. I feel the exact same way. This is the Sahaba now tapping into that internal side. That I feel the same way. So they went and they told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O Messenger of Allah, when we're with you, you remind us of paradise, you remind us of the hellfire, as if we can see it with our own eyes. And then when we leave out of your presence, we go home to our wives and our children. He didn't say we go home to our girlfriends. He didn't say we go to a club. He didn't say we go get high. He didn't say we go celebrate New Year's. He didn't say we go celebrate Christmas. He didn't say we go hang out with our Kufa non-Muslim friends and go do what non-Muslims do. He didn't say that. He said, I go home to my wife and my children. Wallah you have Muslims who engage in all of those behaviors and never the thought of being a hypocrite never even crosses their minds. And here is someone who goes home to his wife and his children and he feels like a hypocrite. The Prophet Wasallam said to Hamdullah, he said, Hamdullah, he said, if you all could remain all the time like you are when you're with me, the angels would come down and shake your hands individually because you wouldn't be human beings. It's impossible, humanly impossible, to maintain the same level of Iman all the time. He said that if you could remain all the time like you are when you're with me, 
the angels will come down and shake your hands. He said, but hanbala, a sa'a, a sa'a. There's a time for this, and there's a time for that. There's a time for this, there's a time for that. And I use that to say that it is the belief of Ahl Sunnah that Iman fluctuates. Our faith, it increases and decreases. Sometimes we're strong and sometimes we feel weak. Sometimes we're strong, sometimes we feel weak. Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, ma alajtu shay'in ashadda aliyya min nafsi marratan li wa marratan aliyya. Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah ta'ala, he said that I never tried to remedy something that was more difficult on me than my own soul. He said, sometimes it's for me and sometimes it's against me. Sometimes you get the better of your soul, you get to retain it, maintain it, and then sometimes your soul gets the best of you and it inclines towards haram, it inclines towards disobedience, it inclines towards raha, it inclines towards relaxation and being lazy. That's just the nature of the body, that is the nature of the human being. One of the salaf, he said, جَاهَدْتُ نَفْسِ أَرْبَعِينَ سَنَةً حَتَّى اسْتَقَامَتْ that I struggle with myself for 40 years until my soul is stakamat, until my soul remains steadfast on the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when that statement reached some of the some of his contemporaries, they said, Tuba lahu, awa istaqamat. Success for him, but did his did his soul actually maintain? Did his soul actually reach the point where he could keep it steadfast? He said, Wallahi ma ziltu ujahidu nafsi wa mastaqamat. He said, Wallahi, I have since waged war against myself and have struggled with myself and my soul has never, has never remained steadfast. I can never get maintenance on my soul to the point where it is steadfast and it's one way all the time. Never. Even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Inna, inna al-Iman yukhlaqu fi jawfi a'ad, fi jawfi kum kama yukhlaqu al-thawb. Ya'ni yabu. فَجَدِّدُوا إِمَانَكُمْ The Prophet ﷺ said that Iman, faith, it was created in your soul, in your heart, just like material from a garment, that it wears out. So renew your Iman. جَدِّدُوا إِمَانَكُمْ Renew your Iman. The Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, كَيْفَ نُجَدِّدُوا إِمَانَنَا How do we renew our faith? How do we renew our Iman? The Prophet ﷺ said, أَكْثِرُوا مِنَ الْقَوْلِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهِ Increase in your remembrance of the statement La ilaha illallah Constantly say La ilaha illallah That is how you renew your Iman Renew your Iman Our Iman fluctuates Some of us are weak, some of us are strong The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He said يُبْتَلَ الرَّجُوا عَلَى حَسْبِ دِينِهِ فَإِنْ كَانَ فِي دِينِهِ صُلْبَ إِشْتَدَّ بَلَاءُ وَإِنْ كَانَ فِي دِينِهِ رِقَّ كَانَ الْبَلَاءُ عَلَى حَسْبِ دِينِهِ يبتاء ما يزال البلاء بالمؤمن في ماله ونفسه وولده حتى يمشي على الأرض وليس عليه خطيئة. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said that you will be tested in your religion based upon how strong you are. If there's some strength, إذا كان في دينه صلبة. If there's some strength in your deen, then your tests will be stronger. وإن كان في دينه رقة. And if there's some weakness, يعني الضعف. There's some weakness in your deen. Then your tests will be weak according to the strength of your faith. That hadith right there lets us know that there's some of us that are strong and there's some of us that are weak. That if you are strong in your deen, then your tests will be stronger. And if you are weak in your deen, then your tests will be according to your weakness. The Prophet ﷺ said that a person will continuously be tested in his wealth, in his self, in his children until he is, work until he is walking on the earth and there's not a sin on him. The Prophet وسلم, in ending he said The Prophet وسلم, said that the strong believer is better and more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the weak believer but in both of them is khair and both of them is good and the scholars who explain this hadith they say that because so, حتى لا يتوهم أن المؤمن الضعيف يعني ليس فيه خير. This is so that we don't believe that because you are a weak believer, there is no good in you. 
Today we tend to operate or function as believers with this black and white attitude that you're either a strong Muslim or you're not Muslim at all. It's just black and white. And that's a very immature outlook on, in, in Islam. That nothing is black and white. Everything is circumstantial. Everything has a circumstance or a situational situation behind it. Nothing is just black and white. People are not born weak believers. Some people succumb to their own desires. Some people come to their nefs. And, but that doesn't mean that there's no good in them. Sometimes as Muslims, we will put a non-Muslim before we will put a, a weak believer. We'll, we'll consider him, it's easier to just say he's not a Muslim. He, he's not Muslim. There's no way he can be Muslim. He doesn't even pray. He doesn't have this. He doesn't do that. And we'll start to mention scenarios, situations that will justify us just totally removing him from Islam. On the premise that he's a weak believer. No, in Islam we have weak Muslims and we have strong Muslims. No doubt the strong believer as the Prophet وسلم, is better and more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the weak believer. But in both of them is good. I don't care how weak a Muslim is. I don't care how weak a Muslim is. That we should never give precedence to a non-Muslim over a Muslim. I don't care how weak his iman is. I don't care how weak his deen is. He is still better than a non-Muslim on any day. At any, at any rate. And this is something that you know we should you know be very cautious of. I, I'll give you one example. I want to end so bad, but the point is just so is so poignant. The Prophet وسلم, there was one of the Sahaba. His name was Abdullah. Hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari in the chapter of Iman. And he used to get drunk. He used to get drunk. And he used to come around the Prophet وسلم, intoxicated. And he used to make the Prophet وسلم, laugh. Picture someone coming to the masjid today intoxicated. Common dunya. Well, I mean, we would just, you know, just totally ban him from the masjid. You know, you come into the masjid intoxicated, inebriated. You know, what's wrong with you? Right? The Prophet وسلم, he understood people are people. People have their issues. So the man was drunk and he used to make the Prophet وسلم, laugh. And so one of the Sahaba said, How many times are you going to come in front of the Prophet وسلم, like this? Allahumma al-anhu. May Allah curse you. The Prophet وسلم, said, La tell anuhu. Don't curse him. And in another narration, he said, La tu'inu shaitan ala akhikum. Don't assist the shaitan against your brother. Your brother. Which person commits that the person is still a believer? We do not put him outside of the fold of Islam because he commits a major sin and that he is still a believer. In another narration, the Prophet وسلم, said, Inni la a'lamu annahu yuhibbu Allah wa rasuluh. The only thing I know about this man is that he loves Allah and his messenger. SubhanAllah. This is along with the fact that the person was getting high, was getting drunk. He was getting drunk. And the Prophet وسلم, said, All I know about him is that he loves Allah and his messenger. Which shows you that a person could possibly be weak in his deen and still love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we don't. You know, remove a Muslim from the fold of Islam due to the weakness in his deen. But there's no doubt that the strong believer is better and more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the weak believer. Wallahu ta'ala. A'lam wa sallallahu wa ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa salam atasliman kithira wa akhiru da'wana. Anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.